Hello everyone and welcome back to another day of a 30 day biology study challenge. Today we're going to be talking about non-Mendelian genetics or things that aren't basic dominant and recessive patterns of inheritance. Through this video we're going to do some content review and then some practice questions at the end. And if you want to stay tuned for the full 30 day study challenge make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our study videos. Let's get started. In humans most human traits are very complicated genetics wise. In fact most human traits are polygenic or polygenic meaning they are are controlled by many different genes interacting together. There's very few classic Mendelian inheritance instances that show up in humans. So some of these are actually genetic disorders like cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, PKU. And we'll talk more about genetic disorders when we get to chromosomes too, which is tomorrow's video. But I just wanted to mention that a lot of examples that we might see or use in biology classes are actually incomplete versions of what's really happening with human genes because many human traits are caused by combinations of up to thousands of different genes interacting together. And the interactions of different genes can cause differences in phenotypes and we have a spectrum or a range of different phenotypes in many instances. For example, hair color, skin color, it's not just a yellow pea or a green pea. It's much more complex than that. And then of course we have epigenetics too where we have different Different factors that are controlling which genes are turned on and off in which environment so it does get very complex but today what we're going to talk about are patterns of inheritance where we don't just have one single dominant allele and one single recessive allele we can have things such as incomplete dominance this is when we have a blending of traits so there may be two different alleles here for example the classic one is something like a red flower and a white flower we'll pretend this is white on the screen and then if they are crossed or bred they would generate pink flowers so let's see how this works so let's Let's say that in this incomplete dominance scenario, we're going to represent red flowers with big R, big R, white flowers with big W, big W. Notice how these are two capital letters for both alleles. And we're using different letters too instead of R's. That would get really confusing if they were both big R's here. So we set the Punnett square cross up like we would do any classic Punnett square, and we see that our combinations in this case could only be big R, big W, R, W, R, W, R, W, R, W. And so what that results in is a phenotype that's a blend of the two parent traits. So R, W would actually give us pink, that intermediate characteristic, instead of one or the other, which is really interesting. Codominance is when we have a representation of both traits in the organism. So we're not meeting in the middle, but instead we have both traits show up at some level. Roan cattle are very common example of this. But with flowers again, to do it very simply, let's say we have purple flowers and pink flowers. Instead of getting a blend of that purple and pink, we would get some petals that are purple and some petals that are pink, or some spots in the petals that are completely purple and some spots in the petals that are completely pink. So let's see how this works with the Punnett square. In this case too, we use capital letters, two different letters to represent the two different traits. Big P for purple, big B for pink. And we cross these two. What we end up getting is, just like we saw in the previous example, these heterozygous offspring that are a combination of both the purple allele and the pink allele. And so what that gives us are flowers that are not a blend of the two colors, but instead show both traits. Blood types we'll see as an example for codominance very frequently. Now, blood types are very interesting. Um, They're controlled by several different alleles. So we have something called multiple alleles that are a possibility. It's not just A or B, we can have the allele for blood type A, the allele for blood type B, or the allele for blood type O. So that's three different alleles. And then remember a genotype is two alleles together. So we have lots of different possible combinations here. And AB blood is actually a co-dominant genotype. So if someone has the allele for type A and the allele for type B, they will represent antigens for both blood type A and blood type B. And then we can talk about really interesting patterns that occur because type O is actually recessive, but A and B are co-dominant. So that's a good example of co-dominance. And then of course there's the RH factor and lots of different things we can talk about um, with the different blood types and who's a donor and whatnot. But let's move ahead now to talk about sex link traits, which is another different type of inheritance that we see in humans. So these are traits that have alleles that are located on sex chromosomes. So in a human karyotype, there are 23 pairs, so 46 total, total chromosomes, and two of those are sex chromosomes. In biologic females, it's an X and an X. In biologic males, it's an X and a Y. If we something is an X-linked trait, that means it appears on the X chromosome. 
Generally, there's going to be more X-linked traits that we'll talk about just because the X chromosome is much bigger and there's more space for traits. Uh, colorblindness is a very common X-linked recessive trait, as is hemophilia. That is also X-linked recessive. Um, and Y-linked traits, there's fewer of them that we'll study and talk about just because the Y chromosome is smaller. And many Y-linked traits actually lead to sterility. So if someone had one of those Y-linked traits, they could not pass it on to their offspring because if someone is sterile, they cannot have offspring. All right, so let's just take a look really quick. Remember, females have the XX chromosome pair and males have an X and a Y. If we look at a human karyotype, so 1 through 22, these are all the autosomes or the non-sex chromosomes that humans have. And then the two sex chromosomes are either XX or XY. And so this is a karyotype of a human male. So let's take a look at the inheritance for colorblindness. So the allele for normal vision is dominant and the allele for colorblindness or someone who is affected with this colorblindness trait is recessive. So we'll show that with a little h. Here we show two normal individuals. Neither of them carry any of the genes for colorblindness. In this case, this female is a carrier here. She is still normal though because she has one dominant allele, that big H, and that can mask or cover up the little H. So she is still fine. She has normal vision. She is not colorblind. The male here is normal as well. Now in this case, the female is colorblind. She has two of those alleles for colorblindness. They're both carried on the X chromosome. The male is also normal. And here we have two colorblind individuals. We have a colorblind female and a colorblind male. But notice with the male, he only needs one copy of that recessive allele in order to be colorblind because he only has one X chromosome. So there's no dominant allele present to be able to mask that other allele. And so he will be colorblind with that one copy of the affected allele. And here we have a case with a female who is normal. Her alleles are unaffected and the male is colorblind. All right, so how do we set up a Punnett square for a sex link cross? It's not overly complicated. We just have to make sure we carry the X's and the H's or whatever letter we're using for the trait together. We don't separate those, but we are gonna separate each individual sex chromosome. So if we were to cross these two parents, we would set up the Punnett square like this, and we make sure we write the letters as like an exponent, like it shows in their genotypes up at the top. And then just like a regular Punnett square, we'll carry down the letters, bring them across to see the possible combinations for the offspring. So in this case, we could have, out of all the possible offspring, there's a 50% chance that this couple will produce females who are carriers for colorblindness, but not have colorblindness themselves, and a 50% chance that they will have offspring who are males who are normal, they don't carry any of the colorblind alleles. So remember, females can be carriers of sex-linked traits because they have two X chromosomes, and technically in biology, a carrier is someone who does not display the trait, but they could pass it on to their offspring. So in this case, a carrier for colorblindness would look like this, and males technically cannot be carriers of sex-linked traits, so obviously someone who has the trait could pass it on to their offspring, but a carrier, if we're going by that strict definition, males can have conditions that are sex linked, but they're not carriers technically. All right, let's get into some practice. Get out some scratch paper. We're gonna be doing some Punnett squares. And if you wanna pause and take the time to do these on your own or mute me and go at your own pace, you are more than welcome to do that. All right, our first cross, we have a colorblind mother and a normal or unaffected father. These are their genotypes. Go ahead and give the potential genotypes and phenotypes of their offspring. And when you're ready, here they are. We have a 50% chance that they will produce carrier females, so X big H, X little h, and a 50% chance of having colorblind males. So in this particular couple, if they have a boy, he will definitely be colorblind. That's the only possible outcome. All right, second cross, carrier mother, colorblind father. These are their genotypes. Go ahead and cross those parents. And when you're ready, here is our outcomes. So we have a 25% chance their offspring will be a carrier female. 25% chance their offspring will be a normal male. 25% chance their offspring will be a colorblind female and a 25% chance their offspring will be a colorblind male. So lots of different possibilities in this particular cross when we have each parent carrying one allele for the colorblind trait. All right, I hope you've enjoyed that short practice and thank you for sticking with us this long. Tomorrow we're gonna to be talking more about genes, how the environment can influence genes and chromosomes, including certain genetic disorders. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.